In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve a system of equations graphically. Now, a system of equations means that you have two or more equations. Solving a system means that you want to find a solution that satisfies both equations or more equations. Now, in this um, video here, I'm going to show you how to solve a system of linear quadratic, meaning that we have a line and a quadratic, and then also a system of quadratic and a quadratic. Now, in either case, um, all the variables will be the same in both the linear and the quadratic, or the quadratic and quadratic, except that the linear and quadratic involves a line and a parabola, and the quadratic quadratic involves a parabola and another parabola. Now, there are three possible outcomes when you're solving a system of linear quadratic equations. So the first possibility is that you have a parabola, and you have a line, but they don't intersect. So in this case, there is no solution because they don't intersect. Another possibility is where you do have a parabola, and it does intersect, but it just touches at one point. So in this case, we have one solution. The third possibility is where you have the parabola and the line cut to the parabola two times. So in this case, you have two solutions. Now, with a parabola and parabola, you actually have four possibilities. So simply, the first one is no solution. And you can have no solution because most likely, the one parabola points up, and the other parabola points down, and the two parabolas never intersect. You can get one solution. Now, most people think that the vertexes might touch. You can also have a parabola which faces up, and another one which faces down, and it just touches at one point, but perhaps not right on the vertex. Another possibility is where the parabolas intersect at two points. So therefore, there are two solutions. So every time a graph intersects another graph, that is where the, a solution occurs. Okay, now finally, this is a silly one, but we can say that there's infinite solutions because we can have a parabola and then we find that when we graph the second parabola, it actually ends up being the same parabola. So this is called infinite solutions. So let me show you how to solve the system graphically. So this first one, let's take a look at, is we have x minus y plus 1 equals 0. And then we also have an x squared. So we have a line and we have a quadratic function. So let's graph the line first. So we have x minus y plus 1 equals 0. So I'm going to isolate my y. So if x plus 1 equals y. But it's probably nicer to write it so that the y is on the left side. So if y equals x plus 1. So I can see that my y-intercept is 1. And my slope, which is this number in the front here, is 1, or 1 over 1. So to graph this, I'm going to graph my y-intercept of 1 and my slope of 1 over 1. So I have a series of points like this, which I can then connect. And I'll use my ruler to do that. Now we're going to graph the parabola. Now you'll notice that this equation here isn't written in a very nice way where I can graph it directly. So what I need to do is I'm going to rewrite it so that it looks more like something that I can recognize. So I have y plus 3 equals negative x squared plus 6x. Okay. So I can see what I have here is that I need to complete the square so that 
I have something all squared. So that is actually written in vertex form. All right, so I have y plus 3 equals negative, and I'm going to factor out a negative on my right side. So x squared minus 6x. So I need to add 9 and subtract 9 so that I complete the square. Now, actually, I might want to move the 3 over, but I kind of left it on this side, but I'll do that after. So I have negative, and then I have x squared minus 6x plus 9. And I want to kick out this negative 9 at the back here. So I'm going to distribute my negative sign into the negative 9. So I have plus 9. Oops. So I have plus 9. And then I'm going to move that 3 over as well. And then I have minus 3. So now I have y equals negative. Factor my trinomial. x minus 3 all squared. And then 9 minus 3 is 6. Okay. So doing a little table of values here. I have a vertex of 3 and 6. Then choose two numbers on the other side. So I'll go 1, 2, 4, and 5. And we're going to plug it into this vertex form. Or you can actually plug it into the original. But I actually find it easier to plug it in to the vertex form since the y is already isolated. So doing that, when I plug in 1, I get 2. Plugging in 2, I get 5. And you can verify this on your own at a slower pace. Okay, so graphing my parabola, I get 3 and 6. Two and five, three and five, one and two, and five and two. Oh, okay, that's not so nice. All right, so after I've graphed, I can see that I have two solutions. Um, we have one right here. And that solution is equal to 1, comma, 2. And I have another solution up here, and that point is 4, 5. Now, unlike solving a solution graphically where we just have one graph, when we have two graphs and we have x and y, we need to find the point with the x and the y value to find the solution. So in this case, I have two solutions, 1, 2, and 4, 5. Now what you want to do is you want to do a check. And to check, actually we'll do that over here. So do the check. We're going to plug in 1, 2 into both equations. So I have 1 minus 2 plus 1 equals 0. And so I have negative 1 plus 1, so 0 equals 0. So that's great. Let's plug in the 4 and 5 as well. So 4 minus 5 plus 1 equals 0, and 4 minus 5 is negative 1, negative 1 plus 1 is 0 as well. Great, that does work. So now I'm going to check my parabola. So I'm going to put in 1 squared minus 6 times 1 plus 2 plus 3 equals 0. And when you do your check and you're verified, make sure that you check with the original question because you haven't uh, changed or altered it in any way. So 1 minus 6 plus 2 plus 3, and I do find that is 0, equals 0. Plugging in 4, I get 4 squared minus 6 times 4, plus 5, plus 3. And so I get 16 minus 24, plus 5, plus 3, equals 0. And that does equal 0 as well. So they both work. So therefore, my solution is 1, 2, and 4, 5. Let's do another example with a quadratic and a quadratic. So first I'm going to rewrite this equation out again. And let's isolate our y. So I'm going to move all the other terms to my right side. Okay, so to complete the square, I need to first factor out the coefficient from the first two terms. So I get x squared plus 8x, and then I want to complete the square here. The minus 26 I'll leave on the outside. So I'm going to take 8, half of 8 is 4, square that, and I get 16. Okay, and then I'm going to kick out that last negative 16. 
by distributing the negative 2. So I get plus 32 minus 26. Okay, so I'm going to factor the trinomial and I get x plus 4 all squared and 32 minus 26 is 6. All right, so table of values for this one. So the vertex is negative 4 and 6. Uh, choose two other numbers on either side. So I'll go negative 5, negative 6, negative 3, negative 2. Okay, so you can plug these numbers on your own. So I'm just to tell you that negative 6 is negative 2, negative 5 and positive 4, negative 3 and positive 4, and negative 2 and negative 2. So we're going to graph this. So we have negative 4 and 6, negative 5 and 4, negative 3 and 4, and negative 6 and negative 2 and negative 2 and negative 2. Okay, so connecting my five points, I get a parabola that looks like this. Okay, now let's complete the square for the other one. Okay, so I'm going to have x squared plus 8x plus 19 equals y to isolate my y. So I get x squared plus 8x. And actually, it's the same number. So I'm going to add 16, subtract 16, and add 19 at the back. So we're going to factor the trinomial here. So we get x plus 4 all squared, and then negative 16 plus 19 is 3. And if you don't like the y at the right side, you can also move it to the left. Okay, so this is my second quadratic using my table of values. I get a vertex of negative 4, remember the opposite sign, and 3, and pick two other numbers. Actually, you'll notice that these are actually the same. All right, but when I plug them in, when I plug in negative 6, I'm actually going to get 7. Plug in negative 5, I get 4, negative 3, I get 4, and negative 2, I get 7. So you can try this on your own a little bit slower. You can just pause the video and see if you can get the same values. So when we graph this, I get negative 4 and 3, negative 5 and 4, same point, negative 3 and 4, negative 6, positive 7, negative 2, and positive 7. So I, this time I get a parabola facing up. Now even from my table of values, I can see that these numbers are the same, or these points are the same, and on my graph, I can see that they do intersect here. So here my solution is then going to be negative 5 and 4 and negative 3 and 4. Now just to double check in case you graphed this incorrectly, I suggest that you plug the points in to the equation so you can check to see if these points satisfy both of the equations. Now remember it has to satisfy both. If it only satisfies one but not the other, then actually you've probably made a mistake somewhere and this is actually not the solution.